Hi, I'm Cam Carmen, and welcome to Dine and Dish, where we explore the fabulous eateries of Detroit and beyond, where regular reviewers come together to dish about their favorite restaurants. So this is how it works. Every week we have three guests, each recommends their favorite spot, and the other two go check them out to see what they think. We're here on busy Nine Mile Road in Ferndale at Pops for Italian, where the innovative dishes are handmade, Pops chops top the list, and the wine flights are off the charts. Pops has been called one of the best Italian restaurants in Metro Detroit. On this week's show, media consultant Arun Prasad takes us to Wright & Company in Detroit, where he says the downtown scene has never looked better with its craft cocktails and contemporary cuisine. Civil engineer Peter Murad shares with us one of Metro Detroit's hidden gems for Mediterranean food. He says make your way to Anita's Kitchen in Ferndale for family-friendly eats with old world style. And up first, chef phenom Kelly Luton says for a meat-centric midtown destination that's turning heads across the city, give Grey Ghost a try. It's a great chemistry here between the bar staff and the kitchen, you know, the food is excellent, the cocktails are great. We work really hard on everything and I think that it shows. We really do have a lot of fun, you know, we're making people smile. Uh, to us, this isn't a job. My thing was that, you know, I find absolute joy and fun in what we do and, and that's the thing I always want to make sure that everyone feels. It's been overly humbling for us to have gotten the response that we did, to see these seats filled every single day. I'd like to attribute it to the fact that we're here and we're, we're putting ourselves onto the plate, into the glasses, doing exactly what we love to do. Being a familiar face, seeing familiar faces, it's that personal touch that we wanted to bring to the Detroit scene that so many restaurants have uh, done before us, uh, and, and we wanted to continue in, in that tradition here. So Kelly, Grey Ghost was your pick, and tell us why you chose it. It was my pick. You know, I had the good fortune of going to one of Chef John's pop-ups with uh, Savor Detroit, you know, back a few months ago. Mm -hmm. So that was like, oh yeah, I want to get to Grey Ghost. I brought three of my chef friends, gals. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, we were like a you know motley crew walking in there. Like we had big expectations, but from the second we walked in, Stephanie sat us down. Um, they brought us a wine and beverage list. And what was really nice is I was a little struggling with the wine, so Rudy, the bartender, came over and offered us like, oh, have a taste of this, have a taste of that. You know, it just felt great to have someone kind of like coaching you along and like, oh, you know, this is good and this is from that region, and we really appreciated it. Also, uh, Marcus, one of the sous chefs there, is one of our graduates from Schoolcraft College. Oh, okay. So it was great to see him, and he was all excited we were there. So before, like, the menus even hit the table, like, oh, walk this fried bologna, like, fried bologna cam. Like, I saw that on the menu, and I can't even believe it's something, oh my gosh. but people love it there. Oh my gosh, so naughty, but nice, right? <laughs> naughty and nice, so great. We had the same thing, the fried bologna, and we thought it was crazy. And then when we ate it, we were like, oh my God, this is unreal. It was great. But everything, you know, um, I think the foundation of what they do there, I would say from a culinary standpoint, is like thoughtful pairings. Like to me, it was so farm to table. And what I also appreciated was it was like real food being real food. Like sometimes like people just take it like a little too far and they're like, oh yeah, what's that? So I felt like everything just had great flavors and I recognized the farmers they were using. And let's talk about Chef John for a minute. Yeah. Came out, brought us like some um, things we didn't even order. They didn't know why we were there. Mm -hmm. Just, we couldn't, anybody. Mm -hmm. Brought us like two or three dishes. Oh, we want you to try this, we want you to try that. You know, we had uh, trumpet mushrooms, we had like a squash and lotte, a pasta. I mean, just the lighting, the, the food, the seasoning, the, and everybody there wanted to be there. That's what struck me. Like, you mm -hmm. know when you go some places that are like, I'm the new cool kid in town, everyone's like, oh, like, let me see if we have a space for you. And everything is like, so, you know, like heightened. Like, you know, you walked in there and you felt like you're going to somebody's like, family's house. Mm -hmm. Like the people got along. They liked each other. Like I was watching them in the kitchen. They were like banging it around, having fun. The food was remarkable. And Arun, you also had the fried bologna, as we mentioned. What was that like and, and what else did you have? You know, so I walked in there and then um, our server 
offered us this fried bologna and I thought it was, what is this? This is a very odd choice of food, but when I had it, oh my God, it was unbelievable. Among other things, what I really liked about Gregos is the knowledge of their staff. They're all so passionate, they're so happy to be there, mm -hmm. uh, as Kelly said, and that's really important. You know, I think that dining is 70% is the experience, 30% the food. And so that made it 100% 100, 100 for me. Right. Uh, and the farm to table concept is like an opening, up and coming concept, and it's really important. You know, the food, the stuff we put in our bodies these days, and everything is processed and mm -hmm. it's become more and more common. This is a really nice, refreshing uh, addition to the Detroit scene. Definitely food ambassadors. They're like ambassadors right. of good food. So. Right, and, and so. what else did you have? Um, actually, I'd like to talk about the, uh, a drink called the Strange Cloud. And that's <laughs> another thing. It is the, the knowledge of their staff. And all of their ingredients are just divine. So they got like uh, Himalayan sea salt mm -hmm. and uh, hickory smoked apple wood. Uh, something I forgot what it was but it was phenomenal mm -hmm. but it was just the knowledge of their staff um, and so overall my experience I'll, I'm definitely going back again mm -hmm. um, and uh, I'll be telling all my friends all right and Peter what did you think of Grey Ghost I thought it was fantastic mm -hmm. uh, I we went there at um, Tuesday night at mm -hmm. six o'clock mm -hmm. the place was packed good sign so and um, like you said about the wait the waiters so knowledgeable a lot of questions they could answer everything and we started out with um, the spicy uh, tuna tartare and I love raw tuna and this one was really nice with spices not really spicy but just enough heat to make it good and um, I had the aged um, prime rib unbelievable so it was unbelievable and then uh, as an appetizer we had that uh, Shisutu pepper. peppers. <laughs> I had yeah. that too. I had everything, I think. <laughs> yeah, and it, it was with candied oxtails. Right. And, um, uh, you know, oxtails are one of those dishes that if you cook correctly, they're delicious. I think Arun touched on, again, the craft cocktails. They were like, it's like witchcraft, like mm. so herbal and all these beautiful ingredients. You just a whole nother, you know, farm to table process of right. drink making. Like so interesting. I mean, I, I learned so much there. It was an amazing outing. Can't wait to go back. I can't wait to go either. Kelly, so Grey Ghost was your pick. Sum it up for us. Um, amazing food, amazing staff, food ambassadors. Mm -hmm. Chef John, uh, just a down to earth, super great guy out on the floor with the people mm -hmm. talking to you. I mean, I think I said earlier out of 100, uh, 10 percent, I'd give him like 110. Mm -hmm. It was I, I, remarkable, probably the best meal I've had in the city in a couple of years. Great. Thumbs up. And Arun? Uh, to sum it up, I would say with the emerging restaurant scene in Detroit, if this was a school, they'd be valedictorian. Nice. Wonderful. And Peter? Yes, I agree. Um, tremendous food. And uh, like you were talking about the wait staff, I didn't know if the waiter was the owner. I mm -hmm. mean, the way he treated you was like he knew everything and you could explain Passionate stuff. Passionate people, yeah. for yes. sure. Mm -hmm. Good to hear. That was very nice. In the D, very, you know, nice. it's right. yeah. great to see all those good things happening in Detroit. You can visit Grey Ghost at 47 Watson Street in Midtown Detroit. They're open seven days a week for dinner and brunch on Sunday. Reservations are strongly recommended, and you can go to their website at greyghostdetroit.com. Coming up, it's an ongoing celebration of Middle Eastern culture for more than 30 years now in Ferndale. As this restaurant proves, it's the real deal for Middle Eastern fare. See what's cooking in Anita's kitchen next. Cravings for kebabs and fortfuls of falafel? Our guest Peter Murad says whether you're a connoisseur of Lebanese cuisine or you're new to Mediterranean delicacies altogether, the place to be is Anita's kitchen in Ferndale. When you think about Middle Eastern cuisine, I believe that uh, the location that we have sets up beautifully, the natural light that spills in, the fabrics that you see in the air are in concert with when you think back to the old times of magic carpets and the allure of the Middle East. And bringing in the different and vibrant colors is just uh, something that I always wanted to do, bring more of a contemporary feel to Middle Eastern cuisine. With so many different Middle Eastern restaurants around the city of Detroit, all you can really do is focus on what is traditional to us.
my in-laws, where they come from, the north of Lebanon. All of the food that we prepare is based off of those recipes that have been passed down generationally. Our hope is just to be consistent, to offer an incredibly fresh quality to it, and always create an affordable dining experience. All right, Peter, what did you like about Anita's? Well, as you know, uh, in Detroit area, there's hundreds of Middle Eastern restaurants. Mm -hmm. And Anita's, I found, is just a touch better. Something about their food, their quality, their presentation mm -hmm. was a notch up. So, but I, I enjoyed the whole atmosphere, the, the thing. We started out with um, the Phoenician pizza, mm -hmm. which I've never seen on any Middle Eastern restaurant. It was a pizza on a pita bread with eggplant and onions, garlic, peppers, and um, feta cheese and mint. Delicious. A little light appetizer. And for my the main course, we went with the mixed mezza, which was a, a combo plate. And it started out with a, a large platter um, cold plate with the hummus and the tabbouleh and the fattouche and um, grape leaves and falafel, all of them delicious. The fattouche was out of this world, um, full of vegetables, light on the lettuce, the way it should be. Then the, the hot platter came, was full of meats. Uh, the chicken, beef, shawarma, the kuftas, the kebabs, the, um, and the just all outstanding. Mm -hmm. These, this mixed mezza was for two people. There's no way two people <laughs> could eat this amount of food. I said easily five or six people wow. could be fed <laughs> by this. So the portions are huge. The pricing is great. The flavors are delicious. And I just love it. Mm -hmm. so. And Kelly, I know you're a fan of Anita's as well. I am. I've been going to Anita's Kitchen forever and ever since, you know, the one in Maple and then, of course, one in Ferndale. Mm -hmm. I think um, I had a great dinner. I'll talk about that. But I think the thing that strikes me the most about Anita's Kitchen is it's like a modern Mediterranean. And I think, like Peter said, that's what kind of like what sets them apart. They're just doing something a little different. It's like cleaner. It's more modern. It's, it reminds me of like farm to table, like they have organic wines. Like they have like very interesting things. It's not just like your typical, not that there's anything wrong with the typical, but I just, I like their approach. It's like fresh, there's all sorts of offerings. So we had a few amazing things. We had the lamb shank, which was like the special, like I asked them, well, what would you order tonight? You know, so I think I catch him off guard, but he like totally came through for me. <laughs> like a little roasted lamb shank or braised lamb shank with a beautiful broth that had roasted potatoes came with like a soup ahead of time. We also shared the fatouche, which was so fresh, so crisp. Uh, hummus, a little hummus. Uh, the juice is on the menu. My friend had a juice. I had an organic glass of wine because wow. they were, uh, And I thought that was really cool too, you uh -huh. know, like just to, again, like they had a very farm to table, modern approach to Middle Eastern food. So it was like things you would expect, but many things that were unexpected. Mm -hmm. You know, it felt like very new fashion, not old fashioned. So I appreciate that. The servers were great. You know, I, I can't, I could carry out from Nita's. Like it's sure. just that, that solid, great Mediterranean cuisine that always comes through. Good go-to. Mm -hmm. Good go-to, good go-to. And Arun, what did you think of Anita's? So I have to confess, I have been a resident of Ferndale for almost a decade. So I am a little biased to say Anita's is my favorite Mediterranean Middle Eastern hybrid cuisine. Um, to touch on Pete's point, one thing, if you order food from there, you're never ever not gonna get enough. Mm -hmm. Because I'm like, when I order food, I'm like, I know what I'm eating for lunch and dinner tomorrow. Right. So right. Um, I love Anita's attention to detail. Uh, the history behind it is the owner, his grandmother, he got all the recipes from her and they have not changed. So this is not your standard run-of-the-mill Lebanese food. This is a twist that his grandmother kind of put on it from their village. Um, we initially ordered the staple. We ordered hummus and uh, the bread came out like clouds. It was just delicious and it was raining beautiful hummus. And uh, <laughs> I always pace myself at Anita's because when I do eat there, I just want to devour everything. And then I'm like, oh my God, well, there goes my appetite, I ate the appetizer. So, uh, but this time I was eating in portions. Um, next we had the kibbe. It's a, just a feast for the eyes as well as your mouth. It is delicious and it's so rich. Uh, just take two bites of it and you feel like you ate an entire, uh, entire meal. 
Um, and the smoothies and the, the drinks that they have, they use fresh fruit. There's no syrups, there's no sugar. It's just delicious and uh, it's healthy. And it's made to order. You can choose what you want, you can choose what you like. And the best part I like about Anita is it's so affordable. It's not, they're not trying to gouge you, they're not trying to be the new hipster trend mm -hmm. to charge 10 times the amount because of high quality. It's an overall great place, great value, bang for your buck, and it's something that I will always continue to go to, and it is a foundation and a staple in the city of Ferndale. Peter, this was your pick, Anita's. Sum it up for us. If you want very fresh food with full of flavor, you can't beat Anita's. The atmosphere is fantastic. I didn't mention that the, the seating, multiple heights, mm -hmm. so people are at different levels. You're not all on the same playing field. They have an outdoor patio for the summertime. It's just a beautiful restaurant. Kelly? Thumbs up. Anita's Kitchen all day long, every day. It's a great go-to, fresh food, clean food, especially, you know, people with diverse palates, a lot of vegetarian opportunities, vegan opportunities, as well as some beautiful, like, old world style, like, roasted meats and, like, the platter you had. Like, yeah. that's one of my favorites. Yeah. And just, like, the spices, like, you just... You feel it, you know clean, what I mean? Very yeah, clean it's like flavor. clean food that almost yeah. makes you like mouth water. It yeah. doesn't sound reasonable, right? right? Yeah. Yes. Just like ah, like and you're right. When you get there, I'm like, oh, the little puffy pita breads. I'm oh, like, yeah. well, I only have six of those, and I'm like, oh no, I'm full. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's so tasty, and I always end up taking some home too. Right. Yeah. And a room. I mean, what can I say? Uh, I never have leftovers. Mm -hmm. I'll put it that way. When I bring it home, it's eaten the next day, and it is. I never regret going to Anita's Kitchen. Uh, it's one of the best places in Ferndale, and it, can, it always will be. And you can find Anita's Kitchen at 22651 Woodward Avenue in Ferndale. It's open for lunch and dinner seven days a week, and reservations are accepted. Their website is anitaskitchenonline.com. Straight ahead, ever wonder if it's okay to order Riesling with your ribeye? How about a Pinot with a pork chop? The wine counselor, Michael Schaefer, is coming up to set a few things straight when it comes to the principles of wine pairing. What we're going to talk about this evening, ladies and gentlemen, is the fundamental principles of food and wine pairing. Emphasis on fun. And the only rule about food and wine pairing is to drink what you like and like what you drink when you are enjoying food. One principle that we do have is it's kind of mirroring. What you want to do is mirror the wine to the food. And we want to mirror the weight and the body. We want, if we're having a light dish, a salad, we're going to have a lighter wine. If we're going to have something a little bit weightier, then we're gonna go into something that, ha that has a little bit more weight. Salmon, yes, it's, it's a fish, very full flavored fish, but a beautiful pairing with salmon can be certain types of Pinot Noir. If it's winter time and we're gonna have a big uh, beef stew or lamb shanks, we wanna have a wine that's hearty, but it's just kind of matching and pairing. If you wanna play around, again, go for it. The second, principle is basically kind of connecting, bridging, bridging flavors in, and aromas in the wine with what's in the dish. A classic example of that is, for instance, a Sauvignon Blanc again, if you're having a dish that's herb, so you kind of link that, you kind of bridge it to each other. If you have a, for instance, a really big juicy piece of prime rib, that Cabernet Sauvignon is going to be earthy and is going to kind of pick up and bridge with those flavors. Does that make sense? Okay. So that's really what you want to do is kind of bridging the flavors and aromas in the wine to the food. And then last, but certainly not least, and this is the one that's a little bit tricky, is contrast. And this is kind of experimentation. There are some classic examples of contrasting. One of which is, the French do this, is foie gras, which is very, very luscious and rich. They pair it a couple of different ways. A lot of times they'll pair it with sauterne at the beginning of a meal. Whoa, rich and rich. That's kind of more the pairing. But it's also a contrast because there's the sweetness and there's the savoriness 
of the, the foie gras. But another sometimes they'll do is to change it and have it with a Sauvignon Blanc because it's so different. So those are really the three different principles of food and wine pairing, and I encourage you to have fun. Go out and try all of them. Cheers. If you'd like to learn more about Michael Schaefer, you can go to his website, winecounselor.net. Up next, we are heading back to the table to discover old school Detroit at its finest. Find out what's right about this restaurant. Everybody's talking about the revitalization of downtown Detroit, and our guest Arun Prasad's pick this week portrays that impeccably. He says Wright & Company is big city style in regal surroundings. So when people think of a small plate concept, they think of tapas. Here what we do is we call it composed small plates. That way it gives you the ambiance and the ability to have a great plate of food at a more reduced price. We wanted to make it accessible so we felt like people could come on a regular basis. More of a place that fit in the neighborhood so people could walk down the street, come and have a glass of wine. We didn't know how successful we were going to be when we first opened. But we thought if we had some things that were snackable, that that could be part of our, our play on the whole concept as well. The way our menus are written reflect an opportunity for the engagement by our servers to the guests to explain to them what our concept is and then in turn hopefully that that provides even elevation of the experience. We only have two rules here at Wright Company that we hope when you leave that you had a great time and two, hopefully your credit card went through. Okay, Arun, tell us why you picked Wright Company. Well, uh, Wright & Company is, I would consider it a staple in Detroit. It is a foundation. Everybody knows about it. Uh, it's been there for so long. It's been there when Detroit was in, its, was in its heyday, when it's downtime, and it's back in the uptick. I love the history behind it. It's, it's uh, hided above John Barbados, uh -huh. which is a really cool up-and-coming fashion store in Detroit. Uh, just the vibe, the scene, everything about that place just screams Detroit creativity. Uh, in fact, I had come to find out that that is actually the first elevator uh, in Detroit. Oh wow, you know what? That elevator is really cool. It's, it's kind of hard to find, right. but once you find it, it's, it's like worth the wait. This is you know, pretty cool. And during the Prohibition era, it was almost like a speakeasy. So the mm -hmm. elevator was actually one of those that somebody pulled up. Wow. And that's how you got there. Wow. And so what'd you have to eat there? So we started off with the loaded potato chips. and. God, that was so filling and so rich. I mean, it just piles your plate on. It just mounds into this cloud of chips uh, loaded with white cheddar cheese, mm. arugula, bacon, and we definitely indulged in that. Uh, every single bite that I took was good as the last one. And you can tell it wasn't, uh, it was freshly cut potatoes like from like five minutes ago. Mm -hmm. So it was delicious, uh, topped off with sour cream and uh, some scallions. And uh, it was definitely worth the calories, I'll tell you that much. What else did you have? So uh, right afterwards, I had the uh, pork belly sliders. Mm -hmm. And the pork belly sliders had uh, bacon jam and uh, garlic aioli. It's, it's, a, it's like a you know, regular old pork belly sliders, but with such a refined, it was like a bow, bow tie. It was delicious. I, I devoured my entire plate, actually. I had five of them, and I think I ate them in about 15 minutes. <laughs> uh, and that was, that was absolutely delicious. And um, my wife, who came with me, she had the strip steak. But they do it in such an interesting way. It's, it's a long steak, but they cut it up into small slices. And um, every one is so rich. I mean, after about three or four bites, you're just like, I don't want to stop eating this. You just don't want it to end. And um, for dessert, uh, I had the bread pudding. Phenomenal. And they, they give it to you like this cute little mason jar. I think they actually bake it within the mason jar. Mm -hmm. Give you a tiny spoon. And my god, it was just so good. It was a, a great thing to top off the meal. And uh, my wife had an Oreo cookie kind of ice cream version of the same, the same style. And it was, it was like a perfect uh, topper to our meal. What I really like about Brighton Company, it's, this, it's an upscale kind of new American tapas bar. And uh, it's really refined food, but at the same time you can go with a t-shirt and flip-flops and not mm -hmm. feel out of place. Mm -hmm. uh, the service was great. 
Um, the restaurant was very catering to us, and uh, you go there and you just feel you're not, you know, you just feel relaxed, and uh, you very much feel like you're a part of Detroit when you're in there. Kelly, what do you think of Wright Company? I like what you said. I think you walk in and it's like, it was my first time there, so mm -hmm. it's like, it was like sort of like a secret, like oh, you know, like there's this elevator, and you when you opened up the door, it was like you know, like when they like roll into a movie, and all of a sudden there's this loud place where people are like dancing and doing this, and there was just like this chaos, like beautiful humming of chaos. So when I walked in, I was a little bit like, oh my goodness, what's going on here? So we had to wait for our table a little bit. Right. So we ended up going up to the bar, and Greg the bartender was amazing. Like I had one of those like crazy craft cocktails. <laughs> You know, so herbal and fun things. And we were starving. So we had um, right. mouth poppers. And, you know, I was sitting at the bar. And, like, I, in 10 minutes, had a whole community of people I was, like, communing with. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> there was people standing behind us waiting for a seat. There was, like, this whole, like, I don't know if it was sort of like a, a family gathering that, like, went off course or something. Like, a brother, a sister, like, two cousins. And they were, like, knee-deep into the experience, just say that. Mm -hmm. Everybody was, like, having fun and, like, you know, just sharing information. Like, you know when you sit down somewhere and everyone's just, like, having a great time? Sure. So I felt like all this really cool community at the bar, and we had some great snacks, and we had a couple of drinks. Then they called us to our table, and I was, like, feeling sad. I'm like, oh, I don't want to leave my bar friends. <laughs> right. But um, we ended up sitting down like, kind of close to the door, which was an interesting experience, too, just to kind of, like, people watch a little bit. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, as everyone was saying, like when you walk in, it has that speakeasy thing, and I felt like just this 20s feel, but modern and linear, like glass, you know, kind of razzle dazzle, like, right. you know, kind of like old with new. So it was fun sitting kind of close to the front so we could see who's right. coming in and mm -hmm. what, you know, just like the vibe. And, you know, it was everybody. It was like young people and old people and, you know, just a huge mix, like <clears throat> people in shorts and, people in, you know, dresses. It was just like a really nice right. flip flops, right. like a really nice mix. But the food was great. We ended up getting um, like a shrimp bang bang. It was, you know, delicious. And we had the sliders and a salad and the desserts, uh, the mason jar, like everything in a mason jar is like fun. Right. Right. Absolutely. So really great experience. Cocktails are great. Service was great. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to going back again. Yeah, great. And Peter, what did you think of Wright Company? Oh, I loved, I loved it, absolutely. I like the, the concept of being on the second floor, mm -hmm. you know, away from the city, and you, you walk into your own room, and the architecture was beautiful, but uh, the thing that really impressed me, I, lo I love the small plate concept, mm -hmm. where you get a small plate and you share it with your everyone. It gets a little sample, and it was so nice. And I, I had the potato chips and the pork belly also, pork belly to die for right. <laughs> so and um, also they had that uh, crispy fried shrimp unbelievable mm -hmm. how, how good those are I, everything the flavors were just explosions mm -hmm. to your mouth and all of them so different I had paella the Szechuan st steak um, and you know what can I say it was beautiful mm -hmm. and I, I love the way that they had the ceiling they had um, one motor yeah. running three mm -hmm. fans circular yeah. fans which kind of takes you back to the old yeah, days yeah awesome. with the belts mm -hmm. and, i mean it, a lot of class and character in it but uh, the small plates I, I thought was a great idea all right so so arun wright and company was your pick sum it up for us so overall my experience at wright and company was wonderful uh, my advice to anyone coming to the city of detroit if you're visiting this is a must stop. Uh, it's a must stop location. If you live in Michigan, uh, it's a great spot to go and uh, celebrate a night out or date night with wifey. Uh, the ambiance, the decor, everything about uh, Brighton Company screams Detroit. Um, I love the concept of the small plates. You never get bored of your food. There's so many different options and you'll constantly be entertained. And Kelly, how about you? You know, um, speakeasy, kind of like hipster, very communal with the tapas sharing. Uh, great date night, great girls night out. Mm -hmm. If you're in the city doing other things, it could be like a stop on your way to other things, like have a bite here and a drink there, and definitely uh, a go-to, I think, for anybody visiting the city and everybody else. And Peter, how about you? Yes, I, I totally agree with both of you. Uh, the small plate concept is tremendous, and every plate, the flavors are so different from the previous plate, it's hard to remember which one you enjoyed the most. And I know since I've been, I ate at Wright & Company, I heard that they had cooked at the James Beard House in New York, the whole staff. So that just shows you the quality of the place. And 
it doesn't have to be just a, with the wife. A whole group could go there, mm -hmm. and it's a lot of fun. So a must-go-to. Great. Wright & Company is located at 1500 Woodward Avenue in Detroit. It's open for dinner seven days a week and brunch on Sunday. Reservations are not accepted, and their website is rightdetroit.com. I'd like to thank my guests on this week's show, Chef Kelly Luton, who says her pick Grey Ghost is a standout among the city's rebirth of restaurants. Peter Murad, whose choice Anita's Kitchen brings exotic flavors of warm Lebanese culture to the table. And Arun Prasad, who wants everyone to know Wright & Company is the glam go-to hotspot in a now thriving downtown Detroit. We'd like to hear about your experiences at any of the restaurants we've featured. You can find us on Facebook and check us out at dineanddishmish.com. You'll also find the links to the restaurants and wonderful wine tips from the wine counselor, Michael Schaefer. So join us next time when we welcome three new guests who will recommend their favorite spots right here on Dine and Dish. Until then, I'm Cam Carmen. Thanks for joining us. Great.